Carl here from Games Brains of Banging Life with Howard Smith of Legendary Thrashers Acid Rain. Howard, how are you? Uh, I am very well, thank you. I am um, currently find me um, back in Yorkshire where it all started, uh, visiting uh, my mum who's been isolating for 16, 17 weeks and um, I've, uh, I've finally been allowed to, uh, to pay her a visit. So um, uh, yeah, it's, um, I- I'm-, I'm back in the acid rain heartland of Yorkshire. That's brilliant. I was going to ask, how have you been holding up during the, you know, global pandemic world we've lived in obviously you say your mother's had to isolate um but yeah. for yourself um well you know i've been like like everybody else i've been locked down um i'm self-employed so um the government have taken great delight in shafting me on um on uh, on finances there um i mean i can't complain I've, I've had a payment it's just it was just uh it was it just felt like a like a token gesture, really. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, when, you know when your grandparents used to give you like twenty p and said, "Go get an ice cream," and you'd be like, "Oh yeah, cheers, thanks," and you and you'd walk off just thinking, "What the fuck?" Well, basically that my the 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 the, the government of my grandparents, um, uh, and it's just like, really, you give me that? Uh, okay, whatever. I could literally go and get an ice cream with it. Oh um, wow! So yeah, um, it was obviously quite a mess. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, look. I, I, as far as as far as it all goes, I'm I, I I'm not going to make this into a political thing because we there, there is no pandemic handbook. We you know no one no one is has has gone through this before. Mm. Whoever was in charge would have made mistakes, and no doubt you know that there is no way to deal with this without there being mistakes made. Really, um, but. Um, you know, I've uh, I've just I've been doing a lot of podcasts, doing a lot of interviews. Um, I live on my own and I'm self-employed, so um, it's been quite an isolated existence. Um, I've been keeping I've been keeping fit. Um, I've actually ended up being the lightest I've been since a teenager. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I know, I know. No, 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 like binging and putting weight on for me. No, no, uh, smacking beers down every night as well. I've actually, that's what's helped with the losing the weight is um, because I, you know, because I do, because I do stand up a lot. Uh, you know, that's my, that's my sort of regular gig. So I do stand up and I also um, uh, host um, pub quizzes and do all sorts of that. So I'm out the house and working environment in environments like pubs, bars and things like that three or four nights a week. So, you know, drinks are there and you're going to have them. They're usually free. <laughs> but um, the minute I went into lockdown, you know, free drinks went out the window and all the rest of it. And I've just, yeah, I've, I've kept reasonably fit. But I, I must admit as well, I have also smoked a heroic amount of weed. So that is, that that's probably helped by just blocking everything out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good balance. Um, it's a rare case, as you say, during 14x weeks that you would actually lose weight. But congratulations, man. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. But to be fair, I think it's because I've just been I've been exercising, not not even like, you know, not pounding, but just I'm, you know, just be being out. And I was just thinking, yeah, do you know what? Every time I eat something, I'm like, I'll then either sort of go out for a walk or out my bike or whatever. And um you know it's it's yeah it, it's worked i can't you know i can't wait to put it all back on again obviously <laughs> get the old uh, get the old middle-aged spread back because um i feel like i'm letting down middle-aged blokes really um what else have you been doing during lockdown have you been able to use the time um really well for yourself and have you learned anything about yourself during this time um uh, well um firstly i've learned that um i fucking hate people who say if you don't come out of lockdown without having learned a new skill or a language or something like that then then you failed here's the news if you get out of lockdown without being overweight without being depressed without being an alcoholic without being a drug addict without wanting to kill yourself without permanent mental scarring then you have one lockdown my friend Mm. Uh, you know, the, it, holding just holding your life together and keeping your shit together, that is surviving lockdown. That is the hardest thing to do. So if you can get through all of this, if you can navigate this once in a lifetime, absolute 
total nightmare if you can get out of this and still have some kind of life and not lost your mind then you've done brilliantly mm-hmm. you know you've done absolutely brilliantly um uh, I, I i mean really i've just put all of my time into uh, into my podcast so just um trying to sort out as many interviews as possible um i mean i'm sure you're familiar with this and you know straight away i just thought well hang on everybody i want to speak to is stuck in their houses <laughs> let's get hold of them <laughs> let's, let's annoy them <laughs> There have been very few excuses to not do it. There's none of, oh, they're on tour or they're away in another country. No, they're not. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to have to get creative with the um, uh, with the excuses if you're going to not do an interview with me over lockdown. <laughs> so about Acid Ray then, there's no kind of argument that your iconic status is secure in the scene because of your early years more than anything else. When you came back in 2015, were you confident that fans still had a hunger and wanted Acid Rain? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, well, bearing in mind the, the Facebook page was up in 2007, and we came back in 2015. Mm. So there was, there was eight years to take this temperature of um, uh, 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 and social media is 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 n- is never a great way of uh, of uh, you know getting a, a kind of uh, any kind of um, overview of what people think. You know, I see I see um, I see bands doing the classic posting a design of a T-shirt and saying, "Hey, you know, what do you think of this design?" And you get 300 comments saying, "I'd have one, I'd have one, I'd have one." So they go out and get 100 shirts done and sell five. Mm. Uh, and um, but over the years, it was just constantly people saying, you know, oh, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? When are you coming back? So, uh, it, it, and, I, and I kind of, I was doing a few guest spots here and there, you know, um, with, with various bands. And, I, you know, I was doing some guest spots. with. I'd always pop in and do a guest spot with Reanimator when, after they came back. And and then, um, you know, I did a did few bits and pieces. And I just, I, I kind of knew. And also, the thing is that we'd ruled it out absolutely completely never going to happen mm. very early doors and when you do that that tends to be a red rag to a bull and everybody just bugs you even more <laughs> um, so not only not only was i confident that people would wanted acid rain i was also confident that we had a future i mean that's why we came back with a new single ready to go yeah. because it's like look there's four guys here that people don't know so we need to have something to release straight away because we're going to get a shitload of trolls when we announce that we're coming back and I'm the only original member. So then we're going to need a single to beat people down with and make them realise that this is about the future as much as it's about the past. Well, we announced we were coming back. We got absolutely no trolls. (laughs) We got none of the accusations that I'd completely prepared for, (laughs) which was... You know, which was well, it's just it's just you. We got none of that, and then we released a single, and everyone went, "Yeah, this is fucking great. Can we have more? Can we have an album, please?" I was like, "Wow!" You know, so um, I mean, yeah, Acid Rain fans have always been a, a a unique breed, and every single band, and I'm well aware of this, every single band says that they've got great fans. But well, I'm saying I'm not saying we've got great fans. I'm not saying our fans. Are, I'm saying our fans are fucking head cases, mm. and by and by that, I just mean, you know, a little bit unhinged. And here's an example for you. We played Manchester um, Revolution, right? Uh, sorry, Rebellion. I don't know where the revolution is. But we played Manchester Rebellion, right? Yeah. The gig finishes at 10. Got to be out by 11 because it turns into a fetish club at 11. Right? So we're packing up. The fetish club attendees are starting to come in. I go over to the manager of the Rebellion. And as I'm walking over to have a chat to her, a bloke Sit about six foot two, walks past me coming the other way, dressed as Snow White. Oh. Stockings, the lot. And and I walk up to the bar manager, and before I can say anything, she looks at me, smiles, and go, and she goes, Your crowd are a bit weird, aren't they? Oh now this is now now this is this woman's bar for weird is pretty fucking high, bearing in mind what I just described. OK, we've just seen a six foot two male snow white walk past and she thinks our crowd are weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think I'm, I think I've got a pretty good sort of bead on 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 how they are. And um, yeah, uh, just 
loved them. As soon as we came back, they started. They were they were singing along to the choruses, and 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 not only that, but totally embraced the other four guys. Absolutely, mm. you know, uh, and made so so uh, welcome. I mean, you know, you, you can ask any one of them. None of them have had any shit from anyone um, for you know. For, for well, you know, you're not you're not in the original band, yeah. are you? You're not in the original, not at all, not at all. So it's been I, brilliant. I generally think um, when I see that that the desire for your return um, and as you say, the focus on the future means who's going to complain about who's in the band and who's not in the band if this is acid rain in 2015 and you're going to get new music, new album. Yay! Let's be grateful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and that and that is most people's. Um, that does seem to be mo- uh, most people's attitude, and also it's kind of been forced upon them because that's why it came. That's why it came back with a new, brand new single, and that song was in the set when Acid Rain started playing its first gigs for twenty five years. And you know, the reason being is there is no future in the past, and I wanted to mm. recognise. I wanted to recognise that from day one. To say yes, it's a new lineup, but hey, here's a new song. So you would say you had a point to prove, and do you feel you've kind of proved it now? Not just with the single, but obviously with the album as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I mean, I think everybody in the band has proved proved it. You know, we've done it as a. It's been a. It's been a team effort. Um, I mean, you know, we were playing the. You know, we. I mean, yeah, basically. If you're if you're in acid rain and you're not me, okay, <laughs> you've spent the last five years playing songs that you didn't write and didn't record. So I'm so pleased for these guys to finally be able to get out and play, you know, play songs that are ours. Yeah. Um and to see people, you know, see fans going so crazy for them and see the reviews that have been so universally positive. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, well, someone said to me the other day, this does go on a bit, but I promise to make it quite quick. Someone said to me the other day, right, before you brought the band back, if I said to you, you're going to bring the band back, you're going to get absolutely no shit for you being the only original member. You're going to do an amazing tour. You're going to very quickly establish your uh, your credentials as an awesome live band just the way you were back in the day. You're going to release two new singles that are going to go down brilliantly. You're going to headline the second stage at Bloodstock, make it your own and break records, then be invited back to the, then be invited back to the main stage. You're then going to record, um, you're then going to, re- oh, you're also going to play shows and festivals abroad, which you never did in the past. You're then going to put out an album where you are going to get personally the best reviews you've ever had, that the band are going to get the best reviews they've ever had, and people are going to be putting it in their top 10 lists of the year, and it's going to be topping a lot of 10, 10 lists top 10 lists of the year how would you feel about that and i would have said well that's the dream so it's gone all right yeah what an accomplishment and it's been what roughly nine months since the age of entitlement um you seem overawed almost by the reaction now that the dust has settled in particular yeah well, I, I, well I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't. The, the funny thing was, Paul was really nervous about the album coming out because Paul is the is the is the uh, the Acid Rain super fan who is now in the band and it Love still that. does. His name. Yeah, absolutely. As he always says, as he always says to the audience, whenever we're doing things like this, he always says, don't worry, I've got you. OK, I've got one foot on stage. I've got one foot in the crowd. We are not going to do anything that shit. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and yeah he's right you know and i mean i i i mean i had i couldn't be i couldn't be as before the album came out i couldn't be as honest as i wanted to be about what i thought because mm. if i was i would have just come across as an arrogant prick but before it came out i thought this is going to absolutely fucking blow people away it's going to completely surprise people there is no way people are expecting this they are just not going to expect this uh and so i just had to i i settled on the phrase i'm very very quietly confident Mm. when actually 
wanted to say was, you're going to love it. It's fucking great. Um, but you can't say that about your own stuff. You know what I mean? Even if you think it, you can't say it. Um, you got to so, be a uh, diplomat. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless you know you're, you know, you're larger than life, like you know, Dave Lee Roth or whatever, and you just like you just go on about how, what, how brilliant you are. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I, I'll tell you a true story, right? I, um, I, I'm quite proud of myself. I am. I've always possessed the ability to be objective, no matter how much I might be in the centre of a situation. I've always had this ability to remove myself from that situation and to look at it from the outside, from every point of view and every angle and, and, and then put it back together and, and decide what to do, where to go, what, whatever needs to be done. And I decided the night before we released the new low, um, as the first single from the age of entitlement, mm. sat down, I had, I had it ready to go on my TV through the cinema system and I said, right, I am gonna, I'm going to watch this video and I'm going to be completely objective. I have never heard this before. Uh, this is just, I'm just going to watch this. Like, I, I've never seen it. Let's just, so I sat there, I watched it. And when it finished, I sat, I was sat in my flat on my own. And when it finished, I said out loud to no one in particular, well, if they don't like that, they can all fuck off. <laughs> Yeah. it's just like look if, if, if you don't if you don't like that if you don't like the album then i'm done i'm out i'm too old i need to retire i don't know what's good anymore sorry uh i'll be on my way and you'd never have seen um because but i was just you know i i, I was convinced that that this was going to go down as well as it has and it was going to and that it was going to surprise a lot of people um but actually just going back to what i was about to say because I, I have a nasty habit of starting something and not finishing it um paul was always paul was like he was really nervous about the album coming out because he didn't know how you know what people were going to think to the new acid rain album and he's kind of responsible his in his top 10 albums ever right is obnoxious Mm. Our last album. He is now he is now on writing and recording the follow up to one of his favourite ever albums. That's fucking pressure. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, so he's shitting himself because he doesn't want to dis disappoint Acid Rain fans like him, right? And I'm like, and I'm like, then, well, you know, fingers crossed. I mean, I'm pretty sure, pretty positive. But but, and he's saying, look, you are going to get amazing reviews. Your vocals on that album are way better than you've anything you've ever done. They're fucking brilliant. You're going to get great reviews. And I'm saying to him, look, these songs are great. Your playing's great. The solos are great. People are going to fucking love this. And, he, and he's going to me, well, I'll believe it when I see the reviews. And I'm saying to him, well, I'll believe it when I see the reviews. So we both spent about the first six or eight weeks from this album coming out of messaging each other. I send him a good, you know, a, a good review of the album and it mentioning like, you know, the riffing and the songs. And, and then he'd send me a review of a, of a, 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 send me a review where it says the vocals are really good. <laughs> so we're both just sending each other positive reviews of each other. Oh wow! Uh, what a thing to obsess over, as well. Normally, um, artists, bands, stay obsess over the negative side, and you end up picking out the one negative out of every ten and going, "That's the one I'm going to focus on." I take it you guys didn't do that. Well, well, funnily enough, after a while, we got a bit. I mean, this is bizarre because you know, we as a band, I've never really experienced a such uh, an overwhelming outpouring of goodwill mm. um, when we've released anything. So this is, you know, this is for me, it's new territory. Getting this all this wonderful, you know, absolutely pretty much universal positive press. So it, it, you know, that that completely surprised me. Um, and it, you know, it surprised Paul as well, but very quickly you can't, you start getting used to it. And then we start reviewing the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, I mean, this, this is shit. I mean, look, you know, he's not, he's not mentioned the production. He hasn't mentioned that within the woods is about a movie. Suzanne Vega doesn't even get a look in. That's fucking rough. So it's, you know, it's like, they're giving us eight, 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 eight out of 10 and we're giving them like two out of 10. Um, but to pick up on what you were saying there, that is very much an artist as opposed to just a band thing, that's an artist thing. Because the one thing I can tell you is I, as being a stand-up comedian, 
and I've I've tried to stop myself doing this, but I do find myself doing it, and and it's it always amazes me that other comedians do it, and then I find myself doing it, and that is I can you can watch a comic, and he's on stage, he or she is on stage, absolutely killing it. They mm. are love. Say so, right, good night. They they walk walk off stage. The place is cheering. People are in the, the MC goes on, and ladies and gentlemen, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come in the dressing room, and you're all going, ah, oh, that was great. And they look at you and they go, see that cunt in the third row by the bar? Never laugh once. That's it. Whole room full of people. But that guy is the one that you focus on. Mm. 149 people pissing themselves but you're the guy I'm going to do the gig to and why because artists are we're masochists yeah I've got the 149 laughing so you are the only one I want yeah you know that's amazing because obviously as a standard comedian you've got the great example to go to but obviously comedy is so subjective so to try and focus on that one person it's almost an impossible task but I guess you want to have a go. What you should, what you should have in your head, and uh, which I have now, because you you find it, and, and the, the weird thing is, it's not something you choose to do. It's something that you notice you're doing. It's like, oh, I'm I'm doing that. You know, it's it's not. It's like, oh, that guy's not laughing. I'm going to concentrate on him then. Oh no, don't do that. Oh yeah, good thinking. No, that doesn't. <laughs> happen. Yeah, that doesn't happen. You just find yourself like you know performing to this one person who's not laughing and then and then a voice in your head goes hello how about performing for the people who are actually enjoying it <laughs> so yeah it does uh, it's it's weird like i said i just think it's i think it's like just a sort of you know uh, a, a fault the faulty brain of uh, creative people i think the fact that you can have enough reviews that you get to the stage where you are reviewing the reviewer uh, for whatever it is, is it's a thumbs up situation. It's a can win. Yeah. It's a can win, should I say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and the funny thing is, though, it's like it, it, it's it's night and day because the music business, being what it is these days, well, let's call it the industry. There's no fucking business going on. Mm. Um, but it, it, it it's kind of bizarre because you could you, you you literally go from a review being written by a journalist with thirty years experience and knowledge to reading a review of somebody who has a keyboard and internet access. Um, and, yeah. yeah, but yeah, look, yeah. I, I've just managed to offend everybody watching this, so don't worry. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry about that, mate. But, but you know what I mean? I mean, hey, look, I've got no formal training and I have a podcast, so, you know, hands up. But it's like, you literally, I mean, one of the reviews was literally like the guy had written every word that he knows or has ever overheard and doesn't really understand. And he just put all those words in one article. Um, and English was his first language. It was his style. But his style was nonsensical. And it, he was using words that, that aren't adjectives as adjectives. He was using words that aren't descriptors to describe things so it was it was really weird it's like wow this glass of water is like a piece of mud sandpaper it's, yeah and, and and then right at the end of his review i don't know if it was good or not i don't know if he liked the album because it was just such a load of utter word shit mm. and at the end of his review he's like i'm a right i'm a professional writer if you'd like me to write for your band i was just like what <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding me I really hope he's watching this as well, because, mate, you're writing his shit. <laughs> <laughs> it um, reminds me of a recent interview that we did with another band where we are talking about the critics and um, getting that balance between reviewers because there are so many out there. And this particular yeah. band uh, were talking how they were sick to death of professional writers, as they call them as well, using the air quotes, um, talking nonsense, just writing the words that don't really delve deep into it. And then they came across a YouTube video from, a, 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 I think, a, a Texas guy and it had like five views in him. And they watched it as a together and he nailed everything for them, like he, what, what it was. And that blew them away. I'll tell you who it is. I'll it? tell you who reviewed their album, despite the fact that I've got no idea what band you're talking about. Old Head on YouTube. 
He, um, I think he's based in Texas. He's a YouTube reviewer, and he did exactly the same to our album to the extent that basically we, you know, he he voted it his album of the year, and we voted his review review of the year. Amazing. <laughs> he just goes through it and he covers off. He covers off the fact that we're a reboot, first album for 29 years, each individual member, each individual's member, the the vibe of the album, the theme of the songs, the production. Je- I, I, he gets everything. He absolutely everything. And so when you said that, I thought, it's got to be old head. I would have to check that out afterwards then because the, yeah. the, the fact that you would come up with that is very coincidental. Yeah, very coincidental. And, it's, and and let's be honest, it's not like there's only one person uh, reviewing albums on YouTube with only a few views. But I, I'm I'm kind of convinced that could that could well be Old Head because I think he lives in Austin. I think it was Austin as well. Amazing. Well, this this could be uh, this could be uh, the most publicity Old Head has ever had. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys talk about publicity. You guys yeah. did a documentary that behind the scenes recording, creating the album. Two, Obviously kind of pulling the should, curtain. Well, part two should be out at the end of the week. Yeah, it was part one, wasn't it? Out on the 6th yeah. of June, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what made you want to do the whole pull the curtain back thing? Um, to be honest, we, we, we documented it for ourselves because... Um, if you've got all the footage of what happened, you've got daily footage of what happened. If you're trying to describe something or somebody can't remember a riff or there was something really cool that happened that day and, and we, we can't re you, you've got a record of it. Um, and, but then it's a case of no, do you know what? Um, you know, it's what people want to see. It's the first mm-hmm. time for 20 years. Um, and I just, you know, I know people, uh, people are fascinated by, um, you know, how albums are put together and all the rest of it. So we, and the reason to do it in two parts is we wanted to focus completely on the writing of the album, which is the, that first part that you've seen. Part two that comes out this week is the, um, will be the recording of the album. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's an ideal companion piece. Um, but uh, however, almost almost as ideal as a companion piece is something I've done for my patrons. Cause I have a, I do, a, I have a Patreon uh, page, which is patreon.com forward slash Howard H Smith. And you can get basically, if you're an acid rain fan or you're a fan of talking bollocks, my podcast, you can sign up for $5 a month and you get loads of exclusive content. that's not available anywhere else. Um, if it's the podcast, you get to find out who I'm interviewing and you get to submit questions and you get your own podcast and stuff like like that but the acid rain insiders get all have basically been watching how the album's being made for the last you know about a year before it came out so you know they they saw videos of demos being recorded of how i was putting the vocals together they were so they've been in on it all of the way and what i've just produced and which at the moment is only on patreon and behind a paywall but we may be making it available because everyone tells me it's a great idea and I have to say I do think it's a great idea mm. is a copy of the age of entitlement but it's quite, but it's the vocalists commentary version and basically you listen to the whole album and I am doing a commentary on the whole album basically telling you um, oh have you noticed that before that's buried in the mix that was so and so idea this was done today that used to I used to go up there on the demo but I go down there and that was JC's idea and this lyric was thought of here and that drum part is from this and that and there and so basically trying to give people an idea while the song goes on of like you know my what I'm doing and 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 what my attitude is and how it was recorded but also little bits and pieces like the the acoustic intro of United Hates that we recorded it then found out the strings were dead so the reason they sound so nice and bright is that jace used spent days you know using shitloads of eq to make it sound better the uh, the strings in the background are the strings that are from the actual demo version um the 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 trees you can hear at the beginning of winds within the woods are actual trees in the car park that surround the studio and the main tree um uh, was blown down in a storm about a month after we recorded the album and nearly took the studio out um <laughs> And so basically, you listen to the whole album, 
and and I'm I, I commentate commentate on each track. But if there's also if there's a little bit of additional information um, that you want at the beginning, then I'll give you it at the beginning. Um, or if you, you know, so so that's why. So basically, it's ten minutes longer than the album because there's little bits and pieces coming in here and there. But um, you know, the people who've seen it so far um, are yeah seem to be really really Amazing. pleased. With it. It's you're right. That's a bloody great idea. I maybe I've missed something. Has that been done before? Uh, mate, that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because it is. It's one of those things that you go. Well, of course. Yeah. But the only reason I thought of it is because, and I mean, this is a prime example of like throughout history when they talk about there's big jumps in technology when there is, when, when there is, when bad things happen like wars and, and disease and pandemics because people are forced into improvising or, or coming up with creative solutions. Now I was at home thinking, and yet, you know, I need to come up with exciting content. We're supposed to be on tour. They'd be getting exclusive tour videos. You know, what can I come up with? And just one day just popped in my head, the idea of, in, of, of doing a, of doing like a director's commentary, but a vocalist's commentary version of the album. And, um, and like I said, all, the patrons have like just gone absolutely nuts and said, look, this is fucking amazing because I love the album anyway, but there's, there's so much here that I didn't know that I feel like I now will go back to the album and be listening to it all over again with, 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 with fresh ears. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm quite pleased with that idea. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very exciting. As you say, for something so fresh and new, um, you certainly got your are finger you, on the pulse of are you familiar with the album. Yes. Yes. Very familiar. It's been out for nine months. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, do you want me? Well, I'll, pay, I'll ping you the. Um, I'll ping you the vocalist commentary version. That will be awesome. Amazing. Yeah. I've never. Yeah, no worries. I've never heard that done before, so I'm fascinated to even hear what the it's like and see how dis- if if it's majorly distracting or really uh, works. Well, yeah. I mean, basically, my voice is louder than the album for the whole album. But but my 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 theory being is you don't want to be straining to hear what I'm saying, you've got the album, <laughs> you know, you can listen to that anytime. So, yeah, just have a, you know, I, you know, for, you, you want to be able to hear me over the music because that's, you know, ultimately the, 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 why you're listening is, and that's yeah. the benefit. So. And obviously, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll send that over. Obviously. Yeah. We film, you know, when you're watching a film with commentary on it, you're not bothered about missing the important dialogue scenes because you want to hear what the director and so on saying. Uh, yeah. Exactly, exactly, and that was kind of my thinking as well. And um, I mean, I haven't told the label I've done this yet, but I want to have a chat with the guy who owns the label and just say, "Look, uh, do you want to start doing these for all your bands? Because a, I mean, let's be honest, it's a good idea. But b, you know, our fans are going nuts for it. Mm. I mean, I mean, you know, I've got a fair few patrons, and, and the, the the comments just went off. Um, so yeah, you know, we well, have to let me know what you think. Yeah, absolutely. And you're nailing this whole social media thing, particularly, you know, back in when I said Rome first was around, it had been a videotape of your documentary and stuff like that. Whereas now it's out for free and YouTube and using Patreon and you've got your podcast and so on. I'll take it. You do enjoy this level of social interaction yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, I, I, I admin nine social media accounts because um, uh, I've got I've got the band, I've got the podcast, I've got comedy. Um, so that's your three major, that's three Facebook pages, that's three Twitter accounts, that's three Insta, three Instagram accounts, and also I post directly from each. None of this none of this bullshit where it's like, Oh, link your accounts and just post from one. No, because it doesn't work. And we all fucking know that. Yeah. Cause if you, if you, if you write an Insta, if you, if you write an, in, uh, an Insta status, that's not a tweet, you know, yeah. because, because you, the, for a start, people's Twitter handles and people's Instagram handles change. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so it's, you know, I, I do the due diligence on it, put it that way. Um, and um, I, I mean, I, I've always said the important thing about social media, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually um, talking with somebody at the moment. They want me to um, 
uh, offer guidance and advice for bands on social media because the 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 main mistakes are so easy to avoid and that is a do not only post about your fucking band (laughs) you know just don't be obsessed with yourself for a couple of days you know we'll post we'll post uh well i'll post um, breaking news, uh, you know, from for in the world of metal, we'll post quizzes about, you know, or, or just you know stuff for interaction. You know, right? Post your favourite riff, and somebody else has got to post, uh, you know, their favourite riff, and you know, and, and you always just trying to keep it interactive and fun. And there's loads of people who go who are signed up to the Acid Rain Facebook page yeah. who aren't particularly Acid Rain fans, but they but they they're fans of thrash and they yep. know. That that we we curate that kind of content and it's fun and our Facebook page is well started in two thousand seven so it's thirteen years old and we have in those thirteen years only ever blocked seventeen people. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I know. What did those seventeen people do? <laughs> Um, probably asked if we were going to tour with Milor Moa Death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, but, um, no, I mean, I, I, I love it. And uh, I mean, you know, A, don't, don't post about your band all the time. B, post every day. C, C, A again. Post every day, but not every day about your band. Okay. Yeah. And also, and also have a tone of voice and stick to it. A clear tone of voice and stick to it because that's what will keep people coming back. That's what makes them feel like they're interacting with someone or something because it's consistent. Mm. Uh, and 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 we don't take any shit. You know, yeah. if, if, if you know if, if if fans come on going, oh, so seems how it's locked down. You writing a new album? No, we're not. We're supposed to be on tour. Fuck off. We took it's twenty nine years. We put an album out. We wait. You've waited twenty nine years. It took us fucking three years to write and record, and we can't tour. And just because we can't tour, you've decided that we should write an album. Hey, well, thank you for your advice. You fucking bin man. Next time I need advice, yeah, about when to put my bins out, now to get my glass collected, I'll give you a shout, yeah? But for some reason, being in a band, right, being in a band is something that people who just like music think that, you know what? I reckon I can give bands advice. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, I mean, I, I love the, the um, oh, you know what, you know what you should do, guys? Now, whenever I see that, whenever I see you should, whatever follows, whatever follows after those words is what that person wants you to do for them. Yep. What they're trying to do is sound concerned and like they have something to offer, something to help. I am merely here to make brilliant suggestions, (laughs) despite the fact that, you know, they work behind a till at Tesco's, here's this great idea for your band. Um, and um, it's fun, you know, it, it, it's fun, but it all all of that kind of tie, ties in to the album title because it's just entitled behaviour. Yeah. And some people got that the album is called The Age of Entitlement. Some people seem to think the album was called The Age of People Who Are Entitled. No, this was never having a pop at millennials. Mm-hmm. Because last time I checked, if you're a human being, you're, in ca- you're capable of entitled behavior, and age ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah. I mean, our, av- our average fan, our, our sweet spot, our fans are 35 to 50. Well, they're also the same people who post immediately as you post a tour. Oh, why aren't you playing my town? Why aren't you playing my city? If that's not entitled, I don't know what is. Absolutely. Okay? So this was never about fucking millennials. But the weird thing is, a few groups of millennials did think it was about them, which did make me think, wow, how entitled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you literally, you have literally delivered 
I mean, it was not about you, but you've made it about you. And, uh, you know, that was there's a, just... There's a level of ownership that seems to be within some fan be- fans when uh, you release an album or see you come back and it's like, well, look, we support you. We bought your album some. We now own you. So you will have to listen to our suggestions. And if you don't, you're the problem. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I love that. I, lo- I love, I love that. I mean, I have, I have yet to walk into a shop and start telling them how to run the fucking place. <laughs> but those people get online and want to tell us all the time how to run the band. It's unbelievable. It really is. But like I said, this, it, it, it's, it's almost, it's almost. Um, well, actually, it's, it's the fans. It's not the supporters because, and there's, a, there's a correlation with football here. If, if you will bear with me, which is. Um, You've got football supporters and you've got football fans. Well, you can't spell fanatic without fan. And that is where fan comes from. So basically, a football fan accuses every single footballer and every single team of diving. When one of their players dives, definitely not a dive. They can't recognise it because they are blind by the fanaticism. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're a supporter, you, uh, you support, you encourage, you back, you get behind. And... 99% of uh, of all fans are like that. But then there is that 1% who are uh, oh, oh, not fans, uh, supporters. And you have that 1% who are fans and who are nuts and take things personally. Um, and, you know, uh, and almost feel like you're theirs, you're their plaything. Yep. Um, and, and it is, yeah, it is kind of weird. It's just a shame that 1% also happens often to be the loudest voice of all. Yeah, I mean, well, they can be, but again, I think possibly the reason why we've we, we've we haven't banned many people from our Facebook page is because um, kind of let it self regulate as well. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, the thing is, knobs on our Facebook page are so rare that when one comes on, by the time I've noticed, two or three other people have noticed already. Yeah, swarmed on them. Started taking the piss. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's how you want it to be. That's a strong group of supporters that, when, as you say, will effectively do the work for you, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we do, we do, um, we do, uh, well, I do a Facebook Live on the Acid Rain page every Saturday. Saturday night in with H and whoever I can get to do it with me. Um, and so I've done it with all the band members. Last band member um, this Saturday. Paul, and then the following Saturday, Jace Lewis is going to come on, um, which is great. And um, do you know what we've had, we've had in, in? I've done five or six of these now, and we've had one one troll, if you want to call it that. And it was when we had um, and it, I had Mark, um, our drummer, on. And um, and first question was from a guy, and it just and I don't I, I don't think English was his first language. Um, and the first question was, what happened to Ramsey? our original drummer. So, of course, my response straight away was, well, to be fair, mate, this is a Facebook Live about the band and it's live, so it's about the band as we are now. Mm. And current drummer Mark is right there, so that's actually a bit disrespectful, so maybe don't ask that question. And um, and I just moved on, and then you just saw other people go, oh, what a knob, what a... What a <laughs> Yeah, just going, yeah, dickhead. Well, yeah, because if you wanted to, if you generally wanted it and it was a genuine question, you could Google it in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's, there's, also, there's also, you know, yeah, yeah. And I mean, oh, oh, yeah, just just one of those things. But hey, you know, um, no harm, no foul. And, um, you know, Ramsey's still alive and well. So yeah. that's the main thing. <laughs> and at this stage, do you think this is the most serious acid rain have ever been particularly lyrically kind of like what you're saying and the record and things like that oh well yeah it's funny you should say that because everybody is completely and totally misinterpreted every fucking lyric on that album okay there's there, there, there is one song one song on the whole album about society and societal issues mm-hmm. that's that's oh, it wow but I'm being told that apparently I'm some kind of social commentator. Ooh, and I wouldn't have said that. 
I, I, this is what keeps happening in reviews. I totally agree. I wouldn't have said that either. But I mean, I've even seen in reviews. Oh, and then the final song, United Hates, brackets, no guess, no prizes for guessing what that's about. Well, you better start handing out prizes because none of you seem to fucking know. But I'll make it clear. It ain't about the United States and it ain't about politics. And nearly most of what is on that album is what goes on in here. Yeah. Because a- the older you get, the older you get, well, when you're young, you write about what you think. When you're old, you write about what you feel. Mm. I tend to write more about what I feel than what I think. And just about the only song on the album that's about what I think is New Age Narcissist. And that is not, you know, that's about narcissism, mm. you know? And there being a new age of it encouraged by social media. I think we can pretty much all agree on that. Yeah, yeah, that's um, very relevant. Yeah, but but it's but it's about... It's about narcissists on social media. So again, it's about a tiny percentage of people. Um, but you know, I, I think maybe because of the age, because of like you know the age we are or the artwork, uh, you know, a lot of people just didn't seem to be able to rationalise that and had an emotional reaction, which, which was, oh, old men hate Twitter and selfies, oh, cunts, oh. and. Um, <laughs> You know, if that's what if that's your takeaway, you've really not done your homework. <laughs> Ultimately, is when it comes to it, Acid Rain, it's never really been about taking massive stances in, in in that regard. Anyway, if you have got an opinion, you've got X amount of faucets to effectively do that. I suppose. Do you find it easy to channel what you want to think or feel into the right project, be it your stand up or your music with Acid Rain? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely, okay, definitely. Cool. Sometimes sometimes things will bleed over. Sometimes I'll feel, if, I, if, if there's something that's really got my go and I'm really, like, mad about it, um, sometimes that, that negative energy and rant can end up being really funny and that'll go to comedy. But sometimes there's no comedy in it. It's just really harsh and horrible. And then that becomes music and that becomes lyrics. Um and um, I mean, you know, as for stances, I mean, funnily enough, we 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 supported the black, we supported uh, the Black Lives Matter Tuesday, where we we blacked out all our social media. And um, on Instagram, somebody somebody um, somebody posted immediately um, unfollow, to which I replied, um, and yeah, well, we're going to block you to make sure you don't come back, you racist cunt. Mm. Um, and they're ba- basically. We put an album out in 1989 called The Fear. Blind Aggression is specifically about the Ku Klux Klan, you know, and did I think all these years later that that song would have any relevance whatsoever? No, 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 not a chance. But unfortunately, it's incredibly relevant. But to to mention a point about um, about lyrics, I mean, yeah, I got a lot of my there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff on the album that is about you know the battles that we all have internally you know in our own heads um or more in, you know, more uh, more directly my head and the battles that i have in my head and um and things that i've been through in my life in the last few years um ripped apart for instance is is it may to most people come across as a song about war it's not it's about a war that um, my father fought in um, intensive care for six weeks. Oh. So because the the analogy is war and the mm. image is war, then, yeah, fine. That's that's not a problem. You know, it's like that's like, you know, I'm not being prescriptive. People don't people do not have to get what I'm saying because the minute the album goes out there it's not mine anymore the old you know that old bullshit I'm not going to say it again because I'll be the hundredth fucking band member to say it this week but it's art and art is open to interpretation um, and however you interpret it then that's absolutely fine you know I'm, I'm, I'm not sat around going oh I'm so misunderstood I just I just thought it was quite funny that quite a few people have just ascribed their their opinions and their um, and their beliefs to some of sometimes just the song title. I mean, people have seen the song title "United Hates" mm. before they've even read the lyrics. 
they've decided what the narrative is. So if you've decided what the narrative is, when you le- read the lyrics, you make the lyrics fit the narrative you already have. So, you know, that's fine. That's cool. That's that's for you then. You know, that's not it's not what I meant, but that doesn't matter. I didn't I didn't write the song, so every single person who listened it listened to it would get exactly what I meant. Impossible, I, yeah. Yeah, well I, I wrote it to get it from out of here down here. That's I, it. Su- I suppose the benefit no matter what, even if it's not un or getting what you had intended, as long as they're getting something out of it, be it personal to them, be it um relevant to their life i suppose that's a positive yeah absolutely absolutely i mean if somebody if somebody and we've already had you know um uh in, in fact a, a, a friend of mine from a, another podcast um which was quite embarrassing because they got me on to say that they voted our album as album of the year which was um which 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 is lovely but when it when it's you kind of like your peers your mates you're, you're almost embarrassed <laughs> uh, and um and one of them was saying one of the reasons that it was that it was his album of the year was because he just particularly um he went through he went through a breakup um uh, and as or when the album came out and um uh the song hardship just absolutely it just it just fit his situation it absolutely fit his situation and i was like well that you know that's that that was fucking awesome yeah you know that's great you know um I wrote it because it's, you know, um, about a dickhead that I used to have as a friend. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, w- when you hear stuff like that, you just, it's, it's fucking brilliant. It really is. Hearing stuff like that is, you know, it's better than selling a million, a million records and all that, you know, it really, and, and I can say that because we're never going to sell a million records. So I'll never know. What to say. You know, cause of course. Say, oh, selling million records must be better. It's like, well, you know, I haven't got anything to compare it to. So yeah. Good. Let's sell that million records, and we'll, then you'll see how yes. that feels. Yeah, exactly, exactly. On that front, Howard, we'll wrap this up now. Then, thank oh, you cool, very much cool. for your time. Oh, mate, it's been an absolute blast. I really, really enjoyed it, and um, it's great. It's it, it's great to get some. Um, it, it's great to just have a chat instead of getting a lot of um, really, uh, really dull, pre-prepared questions asked. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?